Greetings and welcome to three daily tips for teaching, meeting, and presenting online. My name is Chet Davis, C-H-E-T, Chet Davis, otherwise known as your technology tutor. I've been teaching people how to use technology for more than 30 years and been spending the last 11 plus years doing a lot of it using online technologies, webinar, web meetings, etc. And um, during this time, this unprecedented time, of the COVID-19 virus situation where many of us are sheltered at home for the safety and security of ourselves, our family, our friends, our community, our country, our world. Um, many of us are working from home and attempting to reach out and connect with people at home. You may be an educator. You may be a professor. You may be a professional speaker. You may be a business person who's simply trying to connect with clients and customers and prospects. You may be um, a coach. You may be an expert, an author. There's so many opportunities we have available to us that we didn't have in the past for actually connecting and working with other people. And that's why I wanted to present this um, short video series over the course of the next seven days I'm going to be presenting several tips each day based on my experience and my expertise to help you transform what you do on a daily basis where it's possible into using online technologies. Let me walk through the agenda here. So every day of the next seven days, I'm going to um, present three tips. One tip that relates to foundation and technology like hardware, software, platform, whatever. Second tip, a best practice that, that I have... Uh, come to believe that I have come to find works well and or other professionals using online technologies to reach out, to teach, to connect, to communicate, to present, have found best practice as well. And thirdly, um, supporting your presentation, supporting your online meeting, your online connection, whether it's a slide deck from Keynote or from PowerPoint, whether it's some allied technology like maybe ways to integrate. And I'm happy to give you these resources no cost to you, no obligation to help you convert what you do to using online technology. So let's jump into today what the tips are we're going to cover today uh, in terms of foundation technology. I'm going to give you two. Uh, first of all, identifying the proper platform or service. The second is your ISP, and we're going to cover what that is in a moment. I'm going to give you a tip. It's an acronym that stands for your internet service provider. Some things people are already aware of, some people they're surprised about. Secondly, on schedule. More of that in a moment. Lastly, support slides technology. I'm going to talk about what I believe is the terribly important simple step of having a welcome slide like I had today. All right. First of all, platforms. What are we talking about here? So in terms of platforms, what I'm talking about is which tool is going to serve your purpose in the best way possible. To me, it's like having a garage. Technology is like tools. I don't teach technology so you can learn technology for the sake of technology. I help people understand, utilize technology, master technology, get comfortable with technology, get technology done because it's a tool that can help you achieve a, re a result, that can, that can help you achieve a goal. That's what technology is all about. So you got to select the proper platform for the job. If you're doing one-to-one -one connections, Maybe it's interpersonal. Maybe it's connecting with a family member, a friend across town or across the world. Maybe you're connecting with a client or a prospect, an existing client. Maybe somebody who wants to do business with you or somebody that you had who contacted you in the past. And you want to check with them to see if they are ready to do business now. The platforms, and I'm going to go three. Skype may be one of the more popular ones. You may know Skype is a client to client. You can do multiple people on Skype. Most people use it one to one. Um, Skype was purchased by Microsoft a few years ago. It's still free for those connecting Skype to Skype. In other words, if you have Skype on your computer and you're the recipient, the person you're connecting with has Skype on their on their phone, on their tablet, on their laptop, on their desktop computer, and they have a Skype account, that's free. There's no cost. It's like just using the phone with no phone charges. Skype connect to connect. You can um, add money to your Skype account and call landlines. In other words, call a landline or a mobile line, a cell line, 
um, that doesn't go into the Skype app and it's just going to show up like a phone call, that does cost money. It's nominal, but know that it does. If you're doing Skype to Skype, again, that's free. Another free resource is FaceTime. If your recipient has an Apple device, and if you have an Apple device, if you have an iPhone, and they have an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac, laptop, or desktop, FaceTime is an app, an application that's built into the device. It's included in the operating system, in the OS. And if it's been purchased in the last number of years, it's already there. If you're connecting to an elderly family member, for example, um, that may be your best route as long as they have an Apple device and you have an Apple device because it's there's no nothing to sign into. There's nothing to download, to install, what have you. It's just there. It's the easiest way to connect between two parties, okay? FaceTime is what it's called. The last option I'm just going to mention briefly is Google Duo. Uh, that's Google's application, and they have it available for both iOS, for Apple iPhones, iPads, as well as Android, etc. devices. So Google Duo is also a one-to-one -one connecting tool, okay? So that's that platform if you're one-to-one -one communications. If you're looking to have group engagement, like maybe team meetings, you're moving to uh, virtual meetings during this um, shelter in place time. You may want to consider using one of these two apps. Now, group engagement, it's going to be different than what I call like a presentation or a lecture in a lecture hall, or if you're a professional speaker, or if you're um, an online entrepreneur, a business person, you want to get your message out to a whole bunch of people at once with no engagement. It's, it's more you're delivering with um, using different engaging tools online. Then I would recommend using one of these two. Zoom meetings is one. And the other is WebEx meetings. Now, both Zoom and WebEx have other tools. They have webinar tools. That's a different function. But if you are wanting more interaction, you want to see all the, the cameras, the webcams of all the participants. If you've got a small group, like maybe nine people, and you want to have a virtual meeting where everybody can see everybody else's faces, build community, then I would go with one of these tools. I prefer Zoom meetings over WebEx, but again, that's it's, it's personal preference. I like their tools. They are becoming highly popular during this time and many many people are going to zoom and using zoom it's a great resource the third potential application is one to many in other words you are one person you're communicating you're getting your message out to many people maybe it's 50 maybe it's 150 maybe it's 2000 whatever it is then most people who are doing that that's your goal are going to use a webinar platform I've been using GoToWebinar for more than 10 years. The company logged me in. They started with Citrix. Citrix sold it to log me in. Citrix then went and opened up WebEx. Now, I am, I've tried a number of different platforms. I am a huge proponent and a big fan of GoToWebinar. I don't have an affiliate link. I'm not going to make any money on any of these recommendations. I'm just giving you my honest assessment after using a bunch of different tools. I like GoToWebinar the best. Current GoToWebinar is not like the past. If you tried it a few years ago, you do not have to download an app to use it. It will work in a web browser on a computer, on a phone, on an iPad, on a tablet. So that is an option if you'd like to go that route. It can be expensive to get into if you've got a big group. But for me, it's an investment. Okay, you want technology that's going to do a great job. Some people say, what's a free tool? Well, there are some free tools. And in fact, Zoom meetings is free if you have under 100 people and your session is less than 45 minutes. It's phenomenal. I understand during the COVID-19 um, uh, sh uh, shelter in place that WebEx is al also altering its uh, fee structure. Uh, and Zoom meetings has made longer meetings uh, capable for K-12 educators. For So that's something you may want to consider in addition to, I know a lot of schools are using Google Hangouts. But again, one-to-many, GoToWebinar is my top preference. Zoom Webinar is my second. One of the reasons I love GoToWebinar, to me it has the highest audio and video quality of any of the services that I've tested and used. Um, that is a huge deal for me. Um, it needs to be the end user experience. And if there's what we call latency, in other words, if your video is hanging up 
and like hiccuping and the audio is in out of sync with the video, a lot of people are going to tune out. And why we're doing this presentation across distance, we want to get our message across. We need to clearly communicate with each other. And if the technology gets in the way, that to me is not worth considering that technology. Having said that, you'll see there's a lot of free services out there now and ones that are new to the game. I personally would not choose to work with them at this point in time because I want a tried and true technology that's been there for a while. It has a backbone. It has the longevity and the customer service that you know you can count on. If this is your business, you want to, you know, you want to hitch your cart to a horse that you know can carry the load. And that's why I recommend these tools. Now, there, there may be some great new ones that just came out recently, but to me, they don't have the history. And so if you're new to this game, I would recommend going with one of these platforms. Okay. Next, your internet service provider. Foundation number two. A lot of people think, okay, I've got internet. That's good, right? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Here's what I'm talking about. It's about bandwidth or speed, the speed of your internet. Chet, what are you talking about? I don't understand bandwidth. Okay, you don't have to understand it, but let me give you a simple analogy. The internet is coming to your home or your office. Think of it as a pipe. Okay, think of it as a hose. And the smaller the hose, the less data or information we can get in that pipe. If you're just sending text documents, you don't usually need a big pipe because that's a small amount of information, a small amount of data. So it requires less bandwidth. Zip, zip, the, the data can go back and forth. When you are adding video, if you're streaming video or a webcam like I'm doing here, along with audio, and if you have multiple, multiple people with their video cameras on, then you need a bigger pipe. You need higher bandwidth for it to be as successful as most of us are going to want it to be. Okay. Now, um, there's two different kinds of, of bandwidth or two uh, formats. One is the download speed, the stuff coming from the internet to your computer. In other words, if you are on a WebEx call like this, if some of you were to talk or if I turned it on so you could turn your camera on and I could see you, that would be the information coming to my computer. That is the download. If I'm watching a video on Netflix, that is a download. Okay. When we're uploading information is when I'm sending you my video and my audio. That is an upload. When I'm taking a document and uploading that document to Google Drive, to iCloud Drive, wherever, uh, send it files, then I am uploading that document and you want to make sure you have a big enough pipeline a big enough hose you have sufficient bandwidth to send that successfully to give your audience your recipients the proper experience that's why bandwidth is important most internet companies for a long time only talked about your internet speed is x and that was just the download speed because back in the day for some time downloading is pretty much all we've done but in the last decade, more of us are also uploading content. We're not just consuming, we're creating, we're participating. That's where download and upload becomes important. So a logical question in your mind is, Chet, what's a decent bandwidth? A decent bandwidth to participate is between 1.5 megabits per second and 2 megabits per second. Okay. Now, if you want to upload, if you're generating and creating content that includes audio and or video, streaming video, you're playing back videos from YouTube, from your Vimeo channel, what have you, then you, as a rule, want around 8 to 10 megabits per second. How do you know what that is? Well, you can talk to your internet provider. And they're going to tell you a number. It may or may not be accurate. It's based, depending on the system you're using, with how many people in your community are also using the internet, if you're on a cable modem. Um, also, how many people in the household are using it. We're going to talk about that in a second. But let me show you this here. I'm going to open up this web browser here, and we're going to actually go to Speed Test, okay? Speedtest.net. Speedtest.net will test your home or office internet. So I just click Go and watch what happens. So it's going to actually first test 
the download speed. So right now it is testing the download speed on my computer with my internet service provider. And it gets an average after I think it is 30 seconds here. So I'm right around 359 megabits per second. Then it goes and tests the upload speed. You see my upload speed is considerably less, considerably slower, considerably smaller than my download speed. That is common. That is probably very likely the case on yours. Now, I do pay extra for higher bandwidth. So right now, my download speed is 359 megabits per second. Recommendation is two. So you can see I'm in a good place there. My upload speed is 11.3 megabits per second. Recommendation is between 8 and 10 to have a good signal. So I'm in a good place there as well. If your bandwidth is not where you want it, is not where you like it, then it's not something you can necessarily change like, like from a setting in your computer. That has to be something you order with your internet service provider. So you may want to call your internet service provider and ask what the options are. They may be able to upgrade you without coming out to your home or office. They may be able to flip a switch and charge you for an upgrade. That's up to you to consider, okay? Secondly is use a wired connection in your home. I know Wi-Fi is very useful. Wi-Fi is very common. Wi-Fi is something that many of us like to do because a laptop, I can go sit in the backyard. I can sit at my kitchen table. I can sit at my office desk here. I can also sit on the sofa. Um, and, and I do that. And I'm not saying don't do that. But if you are hosting a webinar, if you're participating, if you're joining, if you're in a webinar audience, it's not such a critical issue. But if you are hosting a webinar, strong recommendation is plug that Ethernet cable into your computer so you have a wired connection. Okay, It just ensures that you're going to have a strong signal. You likely know that your Wi-Fi signal, the penetration in your home or office, is different in different rooms, unless you have what we call a mesh network that ensures you have uniformity of the signal across a wide area. Most of us don't have that in our home. We have a standard internet with maybe a single modem and a single router that spreads the Wi-Fi across the household. Farther you go away from the router, the weaker the signal. Wi-Fi is also affected by plaster and lath walls if you're in an older home. It's also affected and slowed down by glass. So there's some things you want to be aware of where you place your router. But simple to say, if you're hosting a webinar, strong recommendation, plug into the router with the Ethernet cable. All right. Next up, advice your housemates to avoid heavy activity. Your teenage or college son and daughter, your significant other, your wife, your husband, your partner, your spouse, uh, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, uh, uh, people visiting. OK, if, if they're also using the Internet while you are hosting, all of you are using that same pipe. OK, the water is not going directly to you if other people are using it, especially if it's what I would call a high intense application. If they are streaming video like on Netflix or Hulu, that's going to take down your Internet speed. If they are online video gaming, some of the graphics, the high intensive graphics on the new games require lots of data, lots of bandwidth, lots of download. Be aware that that is going to affect your performance. So um, do what you need to do, you know, maybe uh, getting bagels ahead of time. Hey, what, uh, what treat can I bring you after my webinar to encourage you not to use the internet too heavily while I'm on? Now, they can be doing email, surfing the web as long as they're not watching long, high definition videos and be fine, but it's heavy use. Okay. Last item, restart your computer before your meeting in the half an hour, hour before you lead a webinar, restart your computer. Number one, you should be restarting your computer every week. Your technology tutor recommends once a week. Like for me, it's Sundays. I restart all my technology. That's a power cycle. Turn it off. It shuts down completely and turn, turn it back on after a few minutes. That can reset what I call the ghosts in the machine. It can clear your cache or cache. There's a number of advantageous uses it has to do a power cycle on your technology and close unused applications. If you're one of those people that has 18 browser windows open, 
Um, that's your choice. If you're a person that has five different applications open, when you're in your webinar, you only want a couple. You want the webinar program, maybe a, um, um, a web browser, and then um, maybe the keynote or PowerPoint. Maybe that's it. If you're not going to use any other, um, you're not going to share any content, any additional data, that just allows your system resources to go towards doing the best job it can on the webinar. Okay? Now, if you have questions popping up by virtue of this content, go ahead and put them in the in the comment box below. I'm happy to respond to your questions. Um, if, if you've got a question, very likely somebody else watching this does too. So let's get those questions out there so you can get answers. Number two, in terms of best practice, stay on schedule. SOS, stay on schedule. This may seem silly. You're like, well, Chad, of course I'm planning to stay on schedule. Yeah, but do it. Here's what I mean. I can tell you how many webinars I've joined over the last decade where I've logged on at the time they said it's going to start and the person's not there for a minute, sometimes two or three minutes. And I'm like, is this even happening? I don't even know if this is going on. They may be having technical difficulties. And yes, I'm, um, what's the word? You know, uh, I can forgive that. I'm not harshly critical. But if you're leading a webinar, be on time, okay? If it's a reoccurring group, it's a work group, if you're a classroom teacher, if you're getting team meeting together and you're going to meet every Wednesday at 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, be on time. When you're late, you're teaching the other people who are prompt that um, their time's not really that valuable and that you may or may, may not show up on time, so why should they bother? I know it sounds, you know, maybe sound critical. Be on time. I recommend logging in one to two minutes in advance, and you'll see why in just a moment why I recommend that. But also, end on time. Again, I've been in webinars. They say they're going to be 45 minutes. They say they're going to be an hour. Some of those have gone an hour and a half. And yes, I can choose to leave, and I regularly do, but be on time. In fact, I recommend um, finishing early. Leave a little time for Q&A finish early and leave on time. People will be thrilled. People will be happy. You're more likely to get those people return again. The other thing in terms of respecting people's time is they may see that your webinar goes from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. They may schedule another activity or appointment after that. Again, respecting people's time finish on time. If there are unanswered questions, if there are people who want to continue and you feel it's worth everybody's time who's going to choose to stay, I would stay, but I would give people the opportunity to opt out like this. Okay, I can see we're coming up on an hour. We've been in this webinar for an hour. Um, I just want to respect everybody's time and let you know that it is approaching four o'clock. And um, thank you for joining me today. Again, you're going to have follow-up notes coming to you via email, the email you registered for this webinar in, or it'll be posted on the in the recording on the website. But again, thanks for attending. I do see some unanswered questions. I'm going to go ahead and stay on the line for a few minutes and address those questions, answer those questions, get you the information you need. But for those of you who have another commitment, again, thank you for joining me today. I want to give you the opportunity to go ahead and, and log out, and I'll continue with those who remain. So something very simple like that. Okay. Last item, your uh, supplemental resource. Start with a welcome slide like the one you may have seen today if you came in early. Okay. Again, it's something welcome. Um, I always like welcoming people. That's the most important thing when they come into a business, right? I want you to feel welcome here. Secondly, uh, identify what it is. Okay, so they know they're in the right place at the right time. So I've identified, okay, three daily tips for teaching, meeting, and presenting online. And lastly, I let them know when it's going to start. So they're not thinking, okay, hey, is this, when's this going on? Okay, so it says, you know, it's got the welcome. It identifies what this session's about, and it lets them know when it's going to start. Now, um, in the successive days, I'm going to talk about what I also choose to do in the two to three minutes before I actually start, but I would go ahead and definitely start on time. Tomorrow, what are we going to cover? Glad you asked that. Our, our technology foundation is talk to me, chat about cameras. Okay. Should I use a webcam or is the computer camera good enough? Or should I use my iPhone? Should I use my smartphone instead of using a, 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 um, my computer? 
Uh, I'm going to give you a quick answer. Use your computer and use a webcam. I'll talk about why tomorrow. Secondly, I'm going to share with you some ideas and rationale the importance of an icebreaker activity or how you get your meeting started. I believe it can help to set the tone for the whole meeting and how people choose to participate or not. Lastly, free and legal digital assets. I saw somebody in a, in a social media forum over the weekend talked about uh, a webinar recording they posted online and Facebook took it down. Why? Uh, it, because of copyright issues. So I'm going to share with you the importance of and some resources where you can get at no cost and fully legal digital assets. That means cost-free and royalty-free, legal to use, music, uh, images, and videos that you can use in your online classes. Okay, Chet Davis, your technology tutor, thanks so much for tuning in. Please let other folks know out there uh, in your world, in the community, about this daily video series. I will be posting the video recordings of each session in a website, and you're going to get that link in an email follow-up after each day's webinar. But please encourage other folks uh, out there who might benefit from this to join us. I would be delighted to help people um, get this information and to avoid the hiccups and the um, the problems that some people are, are are wrestling with in terms of online meetings and online teaching and online presentations. All right. If you have questions, suggestions, topics for my future sessions, go ahead and add them in the in the content box below. You are also welcome to send me an email directly, chet c h e t at yourtechnologytutor.com. Now get out there and make it a great day. Bye bye.